Welcome to Softcore History. Welcome back to Softcore History. I'm your host, despite my current appearance, Dan Register. I, I assure you, it is me. Uh, and I am joined, as always, by the great Rob Fox. Look at you, you twink. No beard. He's a little soy boy now. It appears that way. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, I said this on another show. Your beard's already halfway back. I know. I shaved last night. Yeah. I got a little little stubble right now. No, that's not a little stubble. That is fucking thick. It's not even. You it's like past five o'clock you could shadow. sand down wood with that. It's thick. It would be hard to headlock you. You could probably just rub someone's inside arm raw. Didn't you that. remember when you headlocked Gleason and he yes, fucked he up your arm? Yes, he did that. He did that. I still. Um, do you still have a scar? Uh, it's so tiny now, but there's like a little mark here from where he was like with yeah. his chin. Yeah, because he's got e- of th- just as thick a fucking five o'clock shadow. Yeah. Listen, I talked about this. I like to change things up. There's no rhyme or reason. It's it's all impulse. Uh, it's you, you said know, you were jealous of your girlfriend because she gets to fuck like four different dudes. Yeah. 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 Was it like Fat Dan, Buff Dan, Beard Dan, Clean Twink, Dan, Twink Dan, Twink Dan? <laughs> I can go mustache Otter Dan. Dan. Yeah. Um, maybe I, I go with a soul patch Variety here and there. spice of life, yeah. man. Yeah. You should have her shave her head and just buy a bunch of wigs. I or not. Yeah. Just shave yeah. her head. I mean, she doesn't even have to shave her head. She could just wear the wig. No. no. Commit to the bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, the other voice, of course, is Jake. Hey. How's it going? Good to see you. Dan's uh, mad at Jake. Uh, you know what? Dan? Dan's really mad at me for not having a good sewed last week, I hear. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, of course... Um, you know, from time to time, we have a bad episode, and uh, I'm going to take no responsibility for it last week. Uh, it, was, it was your topic. Yeah, um, you chimed in zero. Yeah. Uh, you did not talk to me. You, you looked away the entire episode. Also, I was disgusted. Yeah, also, quick note, Dan started this episode with visual humor. Yeah. Just right at the top of the podcast. Right. Oh, I look like, despite look my me. appearance. For like 100 views we get on YouTube. Yeah. We have a very robust listener base. Yeah. Video is... A bit secondary. Hey, we're catching up. Yeah, we're okay. doing all right. Dan, we're, Dan's, we're, this is this is just an art, uh, a canvas art episode. Yeah. I actually like, shaved, look at this one. This is ridiculous. I the shaved, history of Rorschach. I <laughs> shaved my beard because I was so disgusted with the episode that I appeared on last week. No, you didn't, no, you no, didn't, you didn't want any me. crumbs from the episode to hang around. You didn't want that suck getting stuck in your beard. So, like anybody that watched it on YouTube last week, that's a completely different character now that's on your screen. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just uh, multiple personality syndrome that I suffer from. Now, uh, do you make love? Or whatever. Do you make love differently? When because you said that you know your girlfriend gets to have different dudes. Yeah. But do you do stuff different? I feel like bearded Dan is solely doggy. Okay. More animalistic. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a little bit more civilized Dan. Um, so, lift and carry. Um, okay. Yeah. Not missionary kiss on the cheek. I don't really like missionary, at all. Some Catholic you are. Yeah, dude. I know. Uh, but what's up, boys? How, how's your uh, your week going so far? Um, Dece, I guess. Yeah, can't complain. Did a little Christmas party with your company? I did. Actually, speaking of which, um, our a longtime listener of a couple of our shows, Aurelio, was there. Do you remember him? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, he, I, I talk, I've talked to him in the DMs every now and then. Yeah, he was he there. He works with you, right? Yeah, I, he, I think he just, I mean, just for, I don't care at this point. Anyone that doesn't know this, I work at the Chive slash Atmosphere, so um, I, I think Aureli is part of Atmosphere. Do you like Bill Murray? No was comment. Bill, was Bill there? Bill Murray was not there. Well, who cares then? Yeah, I know. Was, why even have a party? Yeah, it's um, fucking dumb. But no, yeah, I got to see him. He talked to him for a minute. Um, it was good. Thanks for saying what's up to me, man. I really enjoyed talking to you. That was cool. Yeah, way to talk to your coworker. We don't work in the same. We don't technically work in the same department. But yeah, <laughs> like, like, oh. he's acting like you're better than your coworker. You're like, hey man, yeah, thanks for thanks for shouting me out, little guy. It's like, yeah, before the show, I was actually talking to uh, Joel. Yeah, um, it's crazy. Like I, I don't usually interact with Joel. I try not to, but um, you know. He's switching for us, so I figured I'd give him like a what's up. Give him a shout. Give him a nod. This is like worse than the time you're like, why would you call them a fan? They're a listener. It's like, well, if they listen, they're probably a fan. What if they? What if? What if all of our listeners are hate listeners? So fuck we these just guys. Have like thousands of people that are like, these fuck, please don't. I'll take that. Shit. I will take Still that ad revenue paid. all day. Still yeah. getting paid. That's like the pretty much like entire like that's how TV how, news model. I was about to say that's Howard Stern's model. That's fucking a lot. Yeah, yeah, a lot of hate people watch. like Shock Rock, hate watch. Lex and Terry. 
I'm sure there's people that don't hate listening to us, but they're probably just so used to our voices that it just becomes like a weekly tradition. They don't necessarily enjoy any of the content that we're putting out. But they wouldn't like, miss us you, if we died. Right. But they're just like, it's just kind of habit at this point. They, yeah. This is like weird. New episode doesn't come out. They're like, huh. Oh, they just well, move on. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Their lives are totally unaffected. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this week, it's my topic. Uh, I'm doing Christmas traditions and characters and their creepy, weird past. Now, Jake, Christmas is a Christian holiday. Okay. Uh, in which we celebrate the beginning of a life you ended. I personally ended it. Um, <laughs> I want to let everyone know that I'm a time traveling Jew. <laughs> and when I was at the Sermon of the Mount, I started being like, mm, you know, this guy's a little uppity. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fun fact Jake was the guy who actually he started the Barabbas chant. <laughs> I, that's too deep cut for me. Oh, uh, they were going to free either Jesus or this actual, like, criminal terrorist, Barat. Like, for whatever reason, the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, was like, all right, it's a holiday. It was like, I think it was for Passover. It's like, all right, it's Passover. I'll let a prisoner go. And like, uh, that's got how this- the turkey thing got started. Yeah. yeah Thanksgiving, like, yeah. yeah. He's like, you got this hippie. Uh, we can let this hippie out. Revolutionary. Or uh, there's this uh, fucking terrorist zealot. Uh, I guess pick one of these two, and then uh, and then I'm gonna wash like my hands. Jesus falls like Jesus, Jesus, and then everyone was like, "Hey, fuck Jesus, Barabbas! Give me, give me Barabbas, bro!" Barabbas had better. Uh, he he just had better delivery. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Well, also Jesus was a socialist. We should do an episode on what happens to Barabbas after the fact. Uh, actually, let's just that'll be a companion show to Teen Jesus. It's just uh, post jail Barabbas. Yes, he just goes back to his ways. He just tries to like clean up his life of crime and just try to go straight. He nah. wasn't a criminal. He was a, he was a nationalist terrorist. That's kind of dope. He tries to go straight and I'm, just pr- I'm pro work. Rome. I'm always, I'm pro yeah. Rome. So. Pro empire. Yeah. I'm pro empire. So, yeah. So the first tradition we're going to start with is, uh, of course the classic Christmas stocking hanging over the fireplace. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. So we actually posted this. Now, Jake, a fireplace. <laughs> whoa, 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 You don't have to get me acquainted with fire. <laughs> Our people know a lot about that. Okay. Now, stocking. What's that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we actually on our Instagram posted on St. Nicholas Day uh, that St. Nicholas is the patron saint of prostitutes. Many things. So people, saints... Because I guess there's more things than saints somehow, even though there are literally thousands of saints. P- patron saints, they like quadruple and more up on things. You know what I mean? Like no one's the patron saint of just one. Thing. They add things too. Like there's the patron saint of the internet. That's a thing. Yeah. Who is it? I, I don't forget. know. Yeah. We could probably look it up, but. I don't want to. Yeah, it's fine. But Saint yeah. Mark Zuckerberg. It could be Saint Mark. Saint Never Zuck. Know. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, pa- Saint Nicholas is the patron saint of a lot of things. It would be Al Gore if there was a patron saint. Is he Catholic? Uh, he might be. Actually, I believe he is. Really? I think I. Mm, I don't know. I think he is. I, I, I can't. Bet he's not. He's from Tennessee. Tipper Gore. Tipper Gore just sounds like a. That sounds very. I don't pre- remember. That people, sounds very Protestant. I don't remember people talking about him being Catholic when he ran in two thousand. Seems like it would be a big deal. Yeah. Uh, okay. Not as much. Two thousand. I think it's still a big deal. Yeah, bro. Uh, but yeah, anyway, patron saint of prostos. Yeah, so uh, this tradition actually dates back to the 4th century, where an old man loses his wife to a long battle with a painful illness and is stuck with three unmarried daughters in what is now modern-day Turkey. Who oh, boy. So he, had, he made some bad investments, uh, and he didn't have the coin for dowries. To marry them off to become someone else's well, to, problem. Well, to shove them off. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because it's like you didn't just you didn't just take a chick. You're like, I'll take this fucking thing you call a daughter, but but you got to pay up. Pay up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Where did that turn? It doesn't feel. That's an odd way for the market to work, so yeah, to speak. Right. It feels like. Give the, me a the, gift, so I'll take your daughter it away. It feels like. They should be paying for the, the daughter, daughter right. if anything. That's why I'm saying, like, when did that turn? I don't know. Yeah. Well, does it turn? I mean, the, the, it's still tradition that the bride's dad pays for the wedding, for example. And there are dowries in certain cultures still. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, India, just dowry city. Yeah. It's, it's the <laughs> demise of a lot of female babies, unfortunately. 
what dowry the dowry system yeah. like i'm too poor to have a girl just give me a boy yeah then yeah. i get paid yikes it's a bad what i'm trying to say is that having a baby girl is a bad investment obviously since they couldn't afford to be the wife uh they only had one other option in fourth century turkey and that was prostitution well sometimes you got to make your dowry hmm. it is by the doing way. wife stuff <laughs> <laughs> practicing wife things <laughs> Wife practice. That's that's what a, that's what we should call prostitution. That's what we just call sex. Wife practice. Yeah. T shirt. Practicing wife? No, just wife practice. What does that mean? Wife practice coach. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> no. You can make that. So their old man would just go bumbling through the town drunk, talking about how much of a failure he was allowed to no one in particular. Well, that he's at least to, he knew. He's going to have to pimp out his daughters to some brothel. <laughs> Dead wife. <laughs> Pimping out daughters is option B. Yeah, God. He, yeah, yes, it, he is a loser. So. Yes. <laughs> he Dead doesn't wife have, he's of, a, who had to go through like a long terminal. Imagine if my wife died and I was like, just turned to my son and I was like, sorry, Rory, it's time to start turning tricks. It's time to put out, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any other. I, haven't, I can't think of anything I, else. I'm really not one for creative solutions. Yeah. So, uh. Uh, open that hole <laughs> again. He was a he's a bad investor too. You know, he was bad a lot of things. Bad at gambling. But this guy had a lot of magic beans. What was that he didn't gambling? Was he gambling on uh, chariot racing? Probably. Yeah. Fourth century Turkey. Maybe you would he, think so. He's a big red team guy. Yeah. You know, he was all he was all about the whites. <laughs> yeah. The most most notably the uh, the worst team of the chariot <laughs> yeah. racing. Go ahead and listen to that episode. Yeah. We are still team white though. Obviously. Yeah. Go Whites. Yeah. Because we're not front runners. Did we make that t-shirt? No. Um, we wanted to. <laughs> what we, was it? We had a good conversation about it. It was, yeah. uh, it, was like, go, it was just Go Whites on the front, and on the back, it was just an explanation <laughs> of like, chariot racing. It was like, listen, here's the deal. Yeah. So there's four teams. There's different colors. It, it would cost a lot of money to print the explanation on the back. It's but, uh, The exposition of it is fucking hilarious. Yeah. No, because there would be there would be four shirts. What would be uh, red? There was red, blue, green, white, right? Yeah. So there would just be three that were go red, yeah. go reds, go greens, go blues. Go no whites. explanations. Yeah. Then the go whites one had to have the you have to have all four asterisk. For, you have to buy all four for it to make sense. Yeah. It's a t shirt. You have to carry them around with you. Yeah. <laughs> you need like a small. Yeah, just in a bag. Yeah. yeah. If you buy all four, you get a duffel bag for free. <laughs> it's a good deal. So yeah. while he was in town complaining, I guess uh, a man by the name of you guessed it, Nicholas, mm -hmm. overheard him. Uh, he's also referred to uh, in some retellings as Sinterklaas. Sinterklaas. Uh, he was a Greek bishop. Uh, he decided to uh, help out discreetly because I guess like the drunk, poor old man. <laughs> Someone had to be discreet. In this he didn't want any handouts. You know, <laughs> I don't want anything from you. My daughters are going to fuck for their money. I'm not some piece of shit. Just let me prostitute my daughters. So rather than just give this drunk Admiral. poor fool the money directly because he was apparently too proud to receive help, he took three bags of gold. He's not too proud to let the entire town fuck Pr his daughters. Pride's an interesting thing, Rob. <laughs> you see, I know some people that would rather get fucked than ever take a handout from yeah. the government. I, I'm not that person. <laughs> Seems selective. We're yeah. getting like fucked selective. one way or another. Yeah. By the government. So I might as well get that hand Think out. Think about the implications, man. Yeah. What's really worse. Yeah. Right? The implication, like what you're, what you're like, you know, allowing to happen by getting a government yeah. handout. Think about the or cost. Or 20 guys paying gold coins to fuck your daughters. What's really worse 30,000 foot view. Yeah, I don't want to ruin my constitution as a human being right. by just taking things I don't work right. for. I'd much rather just get lambasted by bachelor after bachelor and <laughs> just have, yeah, just, just, just be filled up. Just have drunk, sloppy dudes run train on your three precious daughters. That's an honest day's work. You know? like, yeah. Sex work is work. Yeah. No, it is. I actually don't, I don't mind either thing here. Fucking legalize it, bro. Yeah. I'm to I totally agree. But yeah, I'm not one for dads pimping their daughters for money. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah. 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 There needs to. There's a whole. Th it's not a yeah. great option for debt consolidation. No, 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 no. I've seen Requiem for a Dream too many times. Yeah. Still better Just, than the option I used with Discover. So. <laughs> get sued. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. 
Are we allowed to talk about that lawsuit? Sorry. Uh, I think it's still ongoing, so I don't know. I don't know if I'm... Uh, <laughs> do you have a lawyer checking in on that? No, I do. I do. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, he, he took three bags of gold, broke into their house through the chimney, and left the bags and the stockings drying over the fireplace. Uh, they obviously found the gold the next day and could all now afford to be what every girl dreams of being as a child, a respectable, ignored housewife. Yes. That's right. And not some dirty independent contractor working the corner. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Lou, 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 Lou. You guys want to listen to Charlie Brown soundtrack? Oh, uh, fun note. It's, I didn't actually put this into the, the rundown, but Charlie Brown, the Christmas special, was actually a Coca Cola ad. Really? The yeah. entire thing? The whole thing was like designed to be a Coca-Cola ad. I actually think would, just Christmas might be a Coca-Cola ad. Right? Actually, yeah. Polar bears, Santa Clauses. Oh, it's making so much sense. Yeah. Now. I like it. I'm fine. And but. for this reason, uh, St. Nicholas is the patron saint of prostitutes, which honestly doesn't make any sense because the women never actually turned a single trick. Oh, they never whored once? Yeah, so he prevented them from being prostitutes. Right. If anything, he's an enemy of prostitutes. Yeah. He's anti-prostitution. Well, no, he's keeping the market not as saturated. That's true. That's that better to prostitutes. Helped with the wages, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then again, you can't collectively bargain with not enough people, so... It's hard to set a rate that way. Yeah. But then people can undercut. So, you know, the, the market for prostitution is just a whole complexity that I can't get into right now. So yeah, well, that's a whole other episode. Yeah. The history of horrors with yeah. Jake Oldman. So that is the, the creepy past of Christmas stockings. So every time you fill up a stocking at home, just think you're saving some prostitutes or future prostitutes. Yeah. Like my child. Mm -hmm. I put a chocolate, you know, Santa in his stocking. He didn't have to go turn tricks for a chocolate Santa. Do you just not put anything in Courtney's? No, she does what she wants. It's like, yours is empty. Yeah. Better get to work and get a job. Get a job. And there's God. only one job I can think of. Because <laughs> I'm very uncreative. <laughs> that, that's such a fucking idiot. What a it's moron. Like, oh, we can't afford anything. Let's Guess do... I got to whore my daughters out. Let's, let's get <laughs> Sounds shit. Sounds like he, he was ready for that move. You, right. He, he was waiting for that it. That was on the, like, that was... That iron was in the fire. It, it, you don't just, oh, my wife is dead. Yeah. Girls. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's it. You're you ready. Just, yeah. She's in the ground and you're like, well, girls. <laughs> he just, he beats the yeah. the dirt from the, the burial plot <laughs> off his <laughs> pants. All right, ladies. Time to start, start shaking. Let's fucking go. Get also, to the corner. can we just like, we're probably not old enough to pull it off right now without people thinking we're talking about a five-year-old, but maybe when we're older. Let's go into a bar and get really drunk. And I'd be like, well, my wife died. <laughs> and now I got to make my daughter's prostitutes. Jesus the Christ. tumor got her. Now my daughters are whores. <laughs> this was always the plan. Just to see what people's advice is. God, and you got to think a long and painful death. It was probably like something stupid, like a kidney stone that just took her out. Oh God. Yeah. Just got a cut that got infected. That too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dies of dysentery. Like yeah. every organ trail, uh, character that you create. Uh, the next tradition we have is Christmas Carolyn. Woohoo. I can't wait to see why people thought singing outside of strangers homes was a good idea. Do we just well, like to spread Christmas joy? That can't be it. Tell me why. It was a great idea. <laughs> Because before the 19th century, Christmas was more of a carnival type vibe. Yeah, Saturnalia. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they weren't necessarily fully on board with that, it was it kind of, those traditions kind of. It was like a holdover kind yeah. of period. Yeah. 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 And you can go back and listen to that episode, of course, last year's Christmas season uh, edition. Yeah. Saturnalia. This is basically what, it was like the Roman holiday at the time. And then once Christianity took over Rome. They were, people were like, well, we still want... We want orgies. A holiday, yeah. yeah. So now this... I'm talking more... The Christmas Carol and everything. This came about more in like the 1600s, 1700s. Okay. Uh, and this is where people would be dressed up in animal skins. They would cross-dress. Uh, and they get super fucked up and go door-to-door -door around town playing instruments and singing with the expectations that they would be invited inside for food and more drink. This almost sounds like trick-or-treating. It kind of is. Yeah. Uh, if trick-or-treating was extortion. 
It is extortion. That's that's literally, it says trick or treat. Which yeah. do you want? If yeah. you don't give me a treat, I'm going to fuck your house up. Give me a Reese's peanut butter cup, old man, or I'm going to fucking egg the shit out of your house. Yeah. So what happens if they weren't let in? Well, that, it, it is like Halloween. If the group at your door was a giant random mob of furries. <laughs> yeah, dude. I kind of like this one. But furries with real animal yeah, fur. Yeah, that's why it's okay. If furries only wore pelts that they fucking made themselves, yeah. cool with it. I mean, you know, there's probably some all-natural furries out there right They're oh like, yeah like purists yeah, bro, i only do yeah <laughs> fuck this like polyester cartoon bunny rabbit shit like i put it i get inside of a bear i don't even clean it out <laughs> <laughs> it just smells like rotten it's just that scene from uh the revenant yeah the revenant <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, i can live in this yeah so they would go door to door demanding their time and hospitality and it was pretty common for these groups to trash the homes rob them blind commit acts of violence against the host and even use the space for booze-fueled orgies. So it's a clockwork orange. It's the, the scene from a clockwork yeah. orange. They're just singing in the rain in it, raping the guy's wife, breaking <laughs> all their shit. I don't want to victim blame here, but uh, Carol me once, shame on you. Carol me twice. You like getting caroled in the ass, yeah, dude. Shame, yeah. Shame, yeah. shame on me. Yeah. It was strictly forbidden by the church, clearly, which only made it more fun for the animals. And... Uh, <laughs> was even the reason New York banned the holiday of Christmas in the late 1600s. Well, the war on Christmas is real. Did, did, we, talk even... about, did we talk about that? What? The war on Christmas? Didn't we talk about that one episode? If we haven't, we should. This is, this is it. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is, <laughs> sounds yeah. like a war on Christmas. Sounds like a war on Christmas, not, maybe not the war on Christmas. Not the current iteration. Oh, yeah. that one's not real. Uh, here's one of the first recorded Christmas carols that I can kind of sing for you here. Oh, yes, please. Do it. We've come here to claim our right. No, sing it. Sing it. I, I don't know how to you want, sing this. Would you it's like more me? of a demand. Can I sing it? Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll sing it. We'll sing it. Okay, here. Oh, uh, Rob's going to sing it. Here you go. I will give you this. I'm just going to do it to another song. Okay. We've come here to claim our right. And if you don't open up your door, we'll lay it flat upon the floor. God bless the mistress and her man. Dish and table, pot and pan. Here's to the one with yellow hair. She's hiding underneath the stair. Be you maids or be you none. Although our time may not be long, you'll all be kissed ere we go home. That just sounds like a rape threat. Yeah. There's a blonde girl under the stairs. Get her. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what that was. You'll be kissed ere we go home. So we get kissed and we're good with this. But Something tells me they want more than kisses. Yeah, kiss sounds like a euphemism for rough sex with animal pelts. On. Well, that's what they did. They did. They would have giant orgies inside the homes with animal skins on, obviously, just fucking each other, cross-dressed, of course, too. Uh, they would drink all their booze, eat all their food, and then uh, take whatever they could. What? How many years did this happen before, like... You have to know after year one, like, don't let the singers in. <laughs> well, they would, if you didn't let them in, they would knock your door down. And then do it Flat anyway. on the floor. Like, Listen, buddy, you can see us, you can watch us fuck when you let us in, or you can watch how we fuck if we have to force our way in. <laughs> it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is this like? It's interesting, though, that like so much until probably pretty recently, I mean, relatively speaking, very recently, most human group celebrations are like, no one knows if you're a guy or a girl anymore. We're all in masks. It's all the scene from fucking eyes wide shut yeah. until like 300 years ago. Human beings to go back to the theme of the previous story of not being creative. It's like something comes up and for whatever reason, we're just like better start putting stuff in holes. Yeah. Like, I don't know what else to do. Let's start filling holes. Yeah, that's it. So Carolyn was essentially terrorizing next door in the rich and personally, I think we should bring it back. Okay. I can't wait to roll up in my neighborhood in a fucking deer pelt and be like, let me in. You're just like, <laughs> come on. You show up. Yeah. Dressed as a, dressed as like a fucking shaman with an erection. And you're just like, here you're, to Carol. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. You probably don't know what caroling means. <laughs> We're purists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me sing this song to you. You'll get the gist of it yeah, real yeah. quick. You got a blonde girl? And uh, stairs? <laughs> is she under them? Yeah, you might want to get her under there. I'll drag her out, but... It makes the song make more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's uh, try to be consistent. Which brings us to our next topic, uh, modern-day Santa. Uh, this, is, this was used to combat... 
Carolyn and uh, those traditions. Okay. Wait, so Santa is... So Santa Sa- fights the furries, the rapist furries? Yeah, so Santa sees you dressed as a woodland creature. Oh, dude, the, fur- the furry friends, the woodland... F- woodland creature. Makes so much more sense, yeah. right? Critter Christmas. Blood orgy. Yeah, Critter Christmas. Yeah. That's a, yeah. So yeah, there's, there's you historical won't, reference. To yeah. That. yeah. You won't get present. Like Santa, they, they had to like think of like Jesus wasn't enough. God wasn't enough. They needed a more immediate threat of punishment if you break into somebody's home and fuck all over their furniture. Yeah. So in 1835, a group of wealthy Dutch so this Americans. this went on for 200 years <laughs> yeah. before they even had a solution. <laughs> How do we stop this? <laughs> well, it just ends after Christmas is over. Just fucking board the windows, yeah, dude. Yeah. You just got a grin It's and like a hurricane. It. It's yeah. essentially the purge. <laughs> yeah. With fun? <laughs> with singing? The purge with singing is way scarier than just the purge. Yeah. Uh, so 1835, a group of Dutch Americans formed the St. Nicholas Society to make Christmas safe for the rich. You know what's funny? The Dutch, that's where Amsterdam is, right? Yeah. The Dutch that came here, tell you what. <laughs> the worst. They are not the Dutch that lived over there. I mean, actually, even the ones over there, though, like, it is a really like weird dichotomy where like they are either super uptight and strict. I don't know if it's like a play hard, work hard thing, or if it's just like a 50, 50 split where like half of them are like, let's do everything. And the other half are just like hard Puritan. Uh, I don't know, man. Even like the, the Dutch in Amsterdam, they don't smoke weed like we do. Like they, they water that shit down with tobacco. Like, yeah, they think we're like grotesque Americans for smoking like full ass, just weed. Oh yeah. We're yeah. all like kind of, this is very, people don't give it enough credit because like of our Puritan history, but in many ways, we're, well, everyone knows we're gluttonous. Yeah. No, we're a very extractionary society. It's yeah. like, how can we make this the most potent experience possible? Yeah. With it is everything? very much like a more, more, more. It's drill, baby drill. Yeah. Yeah. For everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. I love it. So with the help of writers like Washington Irvin and uh, Clement Clark Moore, the society began domesticating the holiday by focusing it upon children. First, they brought over the Dutch story of Sinterklaas, a folkloric figure based on St. Nicholas, whose present given we already covered. Mm -hmm. The anti-pimping platform made him the perfect symbol for family-friendly wholesomeness. Yeah. Why not? Because he was like, hey, don't, don't fuck. Don't whore your daughters Don't, out, yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Which I still support St. Nicholas and his private donations to avoid what I assume these daughters weren't super interested in doing. Doesn't sound like they were on board. Yeah, like sex work is fine if you choose it. It's less fine if you're drunk dad. That's a career path you got to find yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Can't, you can't have someone find it for you. <laughs> you don't need, yeah. you definitely don't need your dad you being your go, career counselor. You, I was about to say, can you imagine going to like your high school career counselor? He's like, yeah, look at your test scores. Have you ever thought about like just putting out? Yeah. Forever? I don't want to, it's like, look, uh, Cindy, I'm just going to say this. You got a tight bod. And uh, it looks like it's going to age pretty good. Okay, you're the type of one that the, the, the you're not going to see tread on those tires for a while. Uh, I wouldn't rule it out. And honestly, you get a retainer, you fix those teeth, you can start charging. Like, I mean, seriously, invest in yourself, believe in yourself. Cindy. I mean, forget college, forget trade school. Some women should be able to like take pole dancing. You know, yeah, well, like- stripping your way through college is an old trope. A tale, a tale as, as old as time. A tale as old as time. So what about these Dutch folks? So they essentially rebranded the entire holiday with the illustrations and poems published by the society. Uh, so Christmas became less of a cold, drunken orgy and more of a child second birthday party. Didn't we talk about another holiday that the same thing happened to? Where they pivoted to kids? Essentially, that's what they did. They just pivoted and made it more focused on kids, and then the, the carnival element kind of faded away because once the kids got involved, it was a little weird. No, we did this with another... I think that was Thanksgiving, maybe. It might have been. Or something. It's, or I, Halloween. Every, no, it was Halloween. Yeah, that's The it. fucking same thing happened with yeah. Halloween. In New York, specifically. We talked about this in another episode. Yeah. Because the trick-or-treaters were... Fuck. We're literally carolers. Uh, thank you. We get a paper towel, too. We're literally carolers... Like, it was the same thing. They would show up and be like, yo, give me shit. Yeah. Every I, holiday was the same. Shit up. It was either Halloween or Thanksgiving, but they showed up to houses. Mm. Yeah. Every holiday was just to extort your neighbors. And have orgies. Mm-hmm. Which, actually, no, it might have been Christmas. 
wait, wasn't it Christmas Day where they would show up to like their bosses? It was like expected of like the rich or the boss. Or oh something. yeah, no, it was part of Saturnalia. It was what? part of Saturnalia okay, okay. because there was a role reversal with the uh, the slaves and the masters too. Where it was like the slaves got to be the masters of the house for ten days. Yeah, some yeah, some weird shit like that. Yeah, which again was Roman, so a little bit before this, but yeah, yeah. it's kind of like yeah, a, a tradition that's carried on. So Christmas just keeps reverting back to drunken orgies and uh, role reversals. Human beings keep yeah. reverting back to it. Maybe it's, we should stop reverting away from it. Li- li- like literally, lean into it. Yeah, it's a fucking miracle that every time you don't hear about like a hurricane coming, that people don't just start like banging in the park. It's not going to be here for another three days, guys. Got to prep. Yeah. Got to prep. It. Yeah, now we just hoard toilet paper. I'd rather yes, do the orgy shit. It's the worst. So the next character is a little bit more European, most notably in Austria. Uh, it is uh, an accomplice of St. Nick. Hans the gay elf? Not quite. Okay. Uh, it's uh, Which part did he get right? <laughs> none of those. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> not quite at all. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So this is actually a demon that uh, Santa dethrones so and the, chains into his service. I love that. Is it um, Krampus? It is Krampus. Oh, yeah. nice. Krampus. Great movie, by the way. I haven't seen it. I really actually enjoyed it. It's not like fantastic, but it's fun. Is that a Kevin Smith movie? No, I don't think so. Like he didn't direct Adam it. Adam Scott's in it. That's all I remember. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that out. Krampus is a horned goat-like monster with one foot and one hoof who acts as a bad cop of Santa's operation. Can I tell you that that is the most terrifying part about him? Not the horns or like the demon face. Just one hoof. One hoof, one human foot. <laughs> Where do you get the foot? <laughs> yeah, that, that's what's like, that's, you just, if you saw that on an animal, you, like your brain would immediately be like, that's like wrong. You'd want like, to kill it. Wrong. Yeah, yeah. Like that shouldn't exist and this needs to be erased or I need to run away. Yeah. It's like seeing a, like the doppelganger thing where it's like, if you see yourself, you want to kill it? Yeah. yeah. No, like, if, if you put two Krampuses next to each other, they looked exactly the same. Even the Krampuses would try to kill each Except other. Except one had a human foot and an elf and a, a hoof. Like, one had one of each, and the other one was two hooves or two human feet. Whatever the combo was, that would be the scarier version. Yeah. Just the, the one-off. Yeah. Asymmetry is not something. Fun. Yeah, there's just something deeply sinful about that. <laughs> so, Krampus's job was to scare children into being on their best behavior with the threat of being whipped with birch rods or stuffed into wicker baskets and dragged to hell. Yeah. It's a bit of an escalation from A to B. Yeah. It's a little bit more extreme. Like if you're naughty, you'll get whipped. And if you're very naughty, you'll be dragged into a lake of fire. Where do I draw the line? I don't know. By a goat. (laughs) Yeah. A goat man. With a weird foot. Yeah. (laughs) With that's that's some fucking yes ending if I've ever heard it. <laughs> God, just like, well, then oh, oh, what the Krampus will get you. What's he gonna do? He'll whip you with a cane. What if I keep doing it? He'll drag you to hell. To be fair, <laughs> what's he look like? He's uh, got horns and uh, a hoof, just a hoof and a foot. Yeah, <laughs> one of each. Yeah. To be fair, I feel like that's a fine thing to tell children because, like, kids, kids. You give them an inch, they take a mile. Like, you just, you want step B to be like, like, all right, I'll give you one, but two, you're literally going to hell. Because otherwise, they'll just keep going and going. Like, hell, it needs to be immediate. I don't know if I already told you this, but my parents would do this shit when we were, like, really little. uh, Because they're both, like, government lawyers. And, Mm -hmm. like, we knew that they worked closely with the police and knew a lot of police. Like, I remember when I was five, my mom would be like... If you do that again, like if I like fight your brother or whatever, like I'm calling the police. I know all of them and they'll take you to jail. And uh, I was like, what? What? And then like a police car drove by just randomly. They might have even called him to be like, we need to drive by our house. And they're like, see, he knows. And he's going to come back and get you if you do this again. I really hope it was coincidental because that's funny as right. shit. No, but we were like, dude, that's legit. They know the cops. Yeah. Fuck, fuck, fuck. But that was B. Like, A was, you're in trouble, go to your room. And B was just like, you're going to go to prison. Yeah, but they didn't tell you a demon sneaked into your bedroom at night and may burn you alive for all of eternity. Well, they? I believe all police are demons, so. Oh, wow. I won't. Shut up, failure to stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the network to say that. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh god. Um, so that's Krampus. <laughs> that's uh, Krampus. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Well, dude. I like to. I just like to. Nothing's funnier to me than like the old timey things that people get whipped with. It's always like birch. Birch cane. Yeah, whatever. Like it's just a switch. Yeah. Every every society has their own switch, essentially. Yeah. Right. Well, you're, you're, but it's funny that they like they can't even just say a stick. Like they describe. They like they pick the tree out. Like oh, don't get a pine. No, you don't want you don't want a fir fir branch. Well, no. yeah. When your kid's old enough, I'm going to tell him about Adrian Peterson. Right. He comes at night. If you misbehave, oh, you know, he'll get that. He'll get that switch. Yeah. And you'll never. No one can outrun him. Yeah. Surely can't. He runs for <laughs> two thousand yards a season, pal. You're not outrunning him. Uh, next up, we have the Yule Lads. Log. Lads. No, lads. Lads. It's like the Proud Boys. The Yule it's Lads. actually like a Christmas white supremacist group. <laughs> that sounds like The that. Yule Lads. Yeah. Anything lads it's or boys. It's essentially they're on, they're the pro-Christmas side of war on Christmas. Yeah. It's, it's way worse They're going to come and burn your menorah. <laughs> <laughs> it's way worse than that. So in Iceland, they have a traditional cast of characters, uh, but these people aren't Frosty. They aren't the Heat Miser. They aren't Yukon Cornelius. No, they're referred to as the Yule Lads. And they're a very problematic version of the Seven Dwarfs. Uh, except there's 13 of them, and they're little trolls. Oh, boy. Each is named for their primary character trait. Uh, there are such lovable characters like Spoon Licker, <laughs> Pot Scraper, Door Sniffer. Right, first off, it seems very appliance-based. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see, this Someone is really... just like drunk in a kitchen. It's like, we better watch out for uh, Spoon Licker and uh, oh, Pot Scraper will get you. Yeah, every room. The house was one room. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know. And they're like, what? Are there any other grandpa? Uh, there are. I got you. Door liquor. Roof thatcher. <laughs> Candle stealer. Oh, no. <laughs> meat hook. <laughs> Dude, that one sounds bad. <laughs> meat hook. Is meat hook the boss? Because <laughs> meat hook. Just... There's two. I think there's two worse ones than meat hook. Meat hook <laughs> might actually be the worst. But uh, I think the two ones that are comparable to meat hook are window peeper. <laughs> we talked about this peeping is too playful of a word for what it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> spying like, you're like watching a fucking like woman undress and you're just like <laughs> i'm just peeping <laughs> i'm just a little peeper i'm peeping yeah. you peeping <laughs> you're, you're not I'm a very... voyeur you're a peeper yeah yeah because voyeur wasn't already sexying it voyeur up sounds <laughs> <hot>. <laughs> yeah. yeah he's like oh that's like voyeur is like voyeur is to that act as luscious as being a terrible alcoholic yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and of course there's sausage swiper Ooh. <laughs> oh no oh boy wait what are the other names i want to know all yeah, of them now let's get the, the rest don't, don't really matter yeah um, they do they, they all matter to me <laughs> i wrote down the ones that like i could translate to english because obviously it's Icelandic. Yeah, the, the other ones are pretty boring. It's like knife duller. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the rest of your imagination. Um, Good Lord. So first, the only thing I've learned so far is that Christmas is a deeply lazy holiday. <laughs> yeah, the worst. Like a man's broke and it's like, I got to whore my daughters out. And they're like, did you try getting a job? And he's like, no, nah, I just get to whore my daughters out. Yeah. <laughs> Kids are misbehaving and it's like, uh, it's a goat man with a hoof and a foot. And he'll take you to hell, hell on the second strike. Yeah, we got yeah. these little trolls that are peeping in your window. Well, it's just whoever named them was just literally like looking around the room. Yeah. Lamp lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Floor biter. Uh, uh, so the kids in Iceland would receive gifts from each of them on 13 days leading up to Christmas. So it's Lord, kind of kind like of gifts. It's kind of like a Hanukkah Christmas hybrid. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you know, with a little bit more. You know, window peeping thrown their way. There's a little, some whimsical thing. Window and, peeper just gives you your underwear back. <laughs> yeah, plus just meat hook. <laughs> it's just the underpants gnomes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Yule Lads also had a pet, the Yule Tide Cat. And his job is to eat all the children that don't receive new clothes for Christmas. <laughs> Wait, so if you're poor, you get eaten by a cat? You get eaten by a cat. So if you don't have new clothes in time for Christmas, this cat is supposed to eat you. That's a very exclusionary tradition. Yeah, typically uh, poor people live under more stress just because of financial distress. <laughs> Not children eating cats. Well, but I'm just saying, it's really, really adding to that with a it's cat. It's like grandma's going to work on that sweater. I'm toast. He Imagine, like, imagine it's like Christmas Eve and your fucking senile grandma's not knitting fast enough. And you're just like counting down the fucking minutes. Grandmama, please grab 
the cat, what's the cat's name? The Yuletide cat. The, 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 the Yuletide cat is coming. Get faster. Just a fucking mountain lion. She's just like half. Yeah, she's just like half dead. She doesn't know what's fucking going on. Uh, uh, meat hook got her. Old yeah, meat hook up to his shenanigans. Window peeper sounds bad, but if you see window peeper, you're okay because you can see him. The problem is you can't see meat hook <laughs> until it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those are the old. Like, don't forget. I'm a little worried. Like. Don't sleep on spoon liquor. <laughs> or door sniffer? Your door sniffer. What if you didn't What if you didn't translate that right? What if door is like a you euph- What if he's just like getting up in your I feel like it's your butt. Yeah. Your back door sniffer. Or your front door for some people. Door I I think you might need to retranslate door. That sounds darker than it than I want it to. Hole sniffer. Yeah. <laughs> Hole sniffer. Yeah. We'll leave it up to interpretation Entrance sniffer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so next up, we have, of course, Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. During the 1930s, the now-defunct department chain uh, Montgomery Ward used to give away free books to children around Christmas. But in 1939, they decided, instead of paying some other publisher, fuck it, have one of our guys write one. Yeah. So awesome. By the way, that is a long way from... Uh... Uh, giving books to poor children in a long way from telling poor children that fucking cat's going to eat them for being poor. If they don't have nice clothes. Yeah. Yeah. So the store's ad man, Robert L. May, was in charge uh, with writing this book. By the way, this is... People talk about this all the time today, right? Like how brands will just start making their own content as advertising. Like yeah. Not advertisements, but like literal content. And they just become classics? Yeah, well, what is I mean, like the current iteration of it would be like gambling, uh, FanDuel and, and DraftKings, like buying up podcasters. Or if like the Geico Gecko just became like a beloved character 100 years from now. Uh, well, they tried to do that with that caveman show. They right. did. That's right. I forgot about the caveman show. Yeah. How long did that last? Like a season? Half a season. season. Starring, like, amongst others, Nick Swartzen. <laughs> I think Nick Kroll was in it too. What the fuck? Yeah. That was. That was a dumb idea, guys. Yes. What were you doing? So the backstory. Uh, to of- be fair, there is a there is a currently, sorry, there is currently a, a very successful TV show based on commercials. What's that? I'm trying to think. You don't know? Half our audience is like, "Come on, you fucking know this." Probably. I'm, I, I'm just not. Started out as a commercial character. Uh, Ted Lasso. <laughs> That was a commercial character? Yeah, it was a commercial for the EPL on NBC. And it was like, like the whole joke was that he was a American college football coach going to coach. I didn't care for Ted Lasso. Football. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, started out as a co- series of commercials. I never, yeah, I, don't, I wasn't watching commercials. Still starring that Jason Sudeikis. That's funny. I did not, I had no idea that was a thing. So Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer uh, was created by this guy, Robert L. Mays. He drew from his own experiences, both as a frail, frequently bullied child and as an unfulfilled adult who never felt that he was living up to his potential. Uh, Shortly after he started this endeavor to create this book, uh, his wife also dies of cancer. Oh, his poor daughters. (laughs) (laughs) That's what we call a callback in the industry. (laughs) So May threw himself into his work, and the result was uh, a best-selling children's book, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Good uh, lord. Did his wife have, like, a giant red nose tumor? Is that <laughs> what the life experience dropped Might from? be it. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Gotta think so. Yeah. Um, little Patch Adams. Uh, Montgomery Ward ended up printing two million copies of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, for which May was paid a nice round sum of zero dollars. It's for charity. Well, he was right. About being a loser, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Good lord. Yeah, uh, this pro- proved a problem as it meant that he had no way to pay off his dead wife's tower and hospital bills. Oh no! There's only one way. Yeah. There's only one way. This is a tale as old as time. Around Christmas. Yeah. Literally every time, Get like those if, daughters to work. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies. They're like, we could, I just like, daddy, I know how to type. I could go be a typist. And he's like, you'll be a whore. <laughs> and I don't care if you like it, but that's all I can think of. And that's what you'll do. Um, so he kind of struggled for a bit. And eventually the CEO of the department store gave him the rights a little late. And, uh, Aww. 
after the claymation. <laughs> after he already made his money. Yeah. After he got his. Not, yeah. Well, so like you can have it. The that's May, sweet. The May family now has the rights to the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Maybe a little Did too he ever after go, go to court for that? Or the, the guy was eventually just out of the con- kindness of his heart? I feel like it's whatever you create. Like when we wrote something for Grand X, it was technically Grand X property. Yeah. So it kind of fell under that. It's like yeah, you yeah, worked yeah. for us, so it's right. ours. Like I think whoever owns Total Frat Move now technically owns like exec board. Yeah. So I couldn't like write an exec board pilot Probably and not. shop it around. You would have to like at least yeah. buy the rights from them. And that would be Clay Travis. <laughs> Wait, is it Clay Travis owns TFM? <laughs> yeah. I what? Think, uh, yeah. Well, his company, I guess. His company. Oh. <laughs> So my likeness is on a Clay Travis property. Yes. It's probably on a bus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fucking kill me. Uh, next up, we have the Nutcracker. Oh, boy. By the way, I don't want to be an asshole, but I'm just going to be an asshole. I went to the Nutcracker last year with the, the Gleasons, me and my wife did, uh, here at in the Austin. Zach? What? Was it at the Zach? Ye- no, it was at the theater... The other one that's off uh, Barton Springs or whatever. The Zach Theater? No, the Zach Theater's at Lamar and Barton. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the other one. Oh, the yeah, Arts I know Center what you're talking whatever. about. Yeah, 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 right there on the, the river. Holy yeah. shit. Do not watch, do not go to a ballet performed by people who are not Russian? trained in ballet. <laughs> yeah. It was so fucking bad, like, painful. Were people falling down and shit? No, I mean, like, they got the moves right, I assume, but it was like, I mean, we could run NFL plays, right? Like, we could learn them and run them. Wouldn't yeah. look good. Sure. Right. Yeah. Would not look right. very good. Yeah. A uh, hitch and go route for me yeah. is going to be very slow. Right. We yeah. Can, yeah. We can learn all of that and put on pads and be like, we're doing football. <laughs> yeah. We would be cosplaying as football players, right. really. Yeah. This is, these were theater actors cosplaying as ballerinas and ballet, whatever. And it was mm, awful. Not good. And me and Gleason almost got in a fight in the lobby. That's, That's a fucking nutcracker. About what? Um, this fucking guy's like little kid was holding the door open for like dozens of people. And I was like, what the fuck? And I'm like trying to get in. And this guy, for whatever reason, we're like the 12th people he's holding the door open for. And this guy's like, you can't get your own door. And I was like, you fucking kid stand. I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm just trying to get in. Like, it was a huge crowd. And then, like, finally, I'm like, like the kid comes in behind us, and then, like, he's like, he's the kid is it's like a redneck guy too. This is the fanciest thing he's ever been to. And it wasn't even that good. And he's like, the kid's like, Dad, did I do something wrong? And he's like, No, the guys dressed like sissies did something wrong. <laughs> what were you wearing? Just like a button down? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't wear denim to the ballet. Yeah. So. Sorry, I don't ski in jeans, man. <laughs> yeah, like Jesus Christ, dude. I was like, what the fuck? And then we were like behind, uh, in front of them in the bar line, and me and me and Matt were just like, "Are we getting in a fight at the ballet today? Are we literally?" I I can almost guarantee you from the other side of that interaction, that guy was probably pissed. His kid was still holding the door. It's, it's his dumb kid's fault. Yeah. I, I, as a father, I can tell you, if my child was doing that. I would not be blaming the other people, confused people walking in. I would be like, Rory, get the fuck off the door. Get in here. Let you that beat guy your hold. child's ass. Yeah. You'd join in with the other guys and kick your child I'd while just be he's like, down. You just got cucked by a guy dressed like a sissy. You got yeah. door cucked by him. <laughs> so the Nutcracker is based <laughs> on an 1816s story uh, by German author E.T.A. Hoffman. Uh, in the original tale, a seven-year-old girl named Marie slices her arm off after being startled by a vision of her toy nutcracker coming to life. Well, it's pretty they, common in German stories. They had sharp knives back then. Yeah, <laughs> that and um, like Cinderella, Rosenputel, uh, sh- the stepsisters cut their toes off to be able to fit in the glass slipper. Like really common in German anything, lore. Anything that comes from Germany <laughs> is going to be pretty uh, dressed up for Disney. Yeah. As she recovers, her godfather, uh, Drussel Meyer, Tells her a tale of a man cursed with the ugliness of a nutcracker. So it's the princess bride with self-amputation? Seems that way. Yeah. By a heartless queen. So some vibes of Alice in Wonderland as well. Uh, when Marie eventually declares that she would, be, she would love the nutcracker no matter his appearance, she is whisked away into the doll kingdom to marry him. The two are wed within a year of meeting, even though at 
if that was the case, she would have been eight years old. Right. <laughs> Which is fine. I just yeah. hope her dad had a dowry <laughs> to fucking pay this guy. Uh, especially in the Toy Kingdom. Yeah. You don't want to be turning tricks in Toy Kingdom. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Because you don't know what you're getting. Yeah, Mr. Kingdom. Potato Head's putting on his angry coming oh, face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give you one hint at what the Jack in the Box does to you. <laughs> what does he do? What's the hint? What? Oh, it's just bam! And, uh, <laughs> He, he, that very, weasel pops. Yeah. yeah. The rock'em sock of robots, they're just, they go bananas. And then we got a few more quick hitters. Nice. Um, oh, that was of, all with the Nutcracker one? Yeah. That was just kind of like. Just I, he married an eight-year-old? An eight-year-old with one arm. I still like that the Nutcracker heard that one person maybe wanted to fuck him <laughs> and crossed through the multiverse, ripped her out of it. It's just Doctor Strange. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Didn't into care a, that she only had one arm and was seven. <laughs> one arm, seven year old. It's like, yeah. well, she can't fight back too hard. Yeah. By the way, I said that in reverse. The seven year old part was probably more important than the one arm part. Both. Probably. Yeah. Um, and was just like, got but it. How old's this nutcracker? Yeah, I don't know. Ageless. That's fair. It's a nutcracker. <laughs> yeah. Right. You can't be a pedophile if you have no age. Yeah. Uh, some other <laughs> like, I'm not a pedophile. I exist outside of time. <laughs> Just to kind of wrap everything together. We got some more traditions that are quick hitters. Uh, cookies and milk for Santa was created during the Great Depression to celebrate the little you have and the importance of giving back to others despite starving yourself. To the king that lives in the north? <laughs> yeah. That's who you can bet. <laughs> Was that like FDR propaganda to get people to keep paying their taxes? That's some fucking victim mindset shit right there, dude. Good lord. Slave mentality. The richest man on earth is who you have to give back. Go give the milk and cookies to your starving neighbor. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then uh, the mistletoe was actually not originally used to, uh, you know. For kissing? For kissing or molesting a stranger. Uh, it was to parting criminals. Wait, how? Um, as tradition, they would just go underneath, the, they would hang the mistletoe every Christmas, and they would uh, pardon like one or two criminals, and they would go under the mistletoe. Once I, they actually were pardoned. Think, I actually think the judge did kiss them to pardon them, though. <laughs> that was how it was official. Yeah. It was just the judge would give them a kiss. That's how you consummate a marriage. Yeah. In front of people, at least. And then a little fact I already shared already was uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas special was just a Coca-Cola ad. That's fine. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Great soundtrack, so It's literally one of the... It's got to be like a top five soundtrack of all time. Yeah, it's fantastic. Fucking incredible. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, it's really depressing, too. It's yeah. very Charlie Brown. So, yeah, just a quick, fun, flirty uh, Christmas tradition and character episode. Uh, what was your favorite? Well, I mean, I just love... I, 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 nothing tops that dad. It's either the dad or the Krampus foot. The Krampus foot is Hitler. You don't like the Yule lads? <laughs> oh, oh, the Yule lads. Yule lads. Yeah, Yule lads are my boys. Yeah. I forgot about that. What's up, Meat Hook? <laughs> yeah. Meat Hook in the house? Window peeper? <laughs> Looks good. Peep, peep, peep. We should just make a shirt with all the Yule lads. No, let's make, we, should do, we should make a quiz on the website. It's like, what Yule lad are you? What Yule lad to, are you? Yeah, you have to answer questions. We make some Yule lad Funkos. Yeah. Oh, like, oh fuck, I'm Pot Scraper. <laughs> Damn it. Pot, pots are bullshit. I'm not Pot Scraper. Oh, I got Door Sniffer. Fucking window peep. Door Sniffer, it's, he's the creepiest one. Don't sleep on Spoon Licker. <laughs> yeah, don't sleep on Spoon Licker. Spoon Licker will get you sick. Yeah. And then there's just that cat that'll eat the poor children. Oh, YTC? Yuletide cat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I like... <laughs> big YTC guy. But well, I really do like the dad whose plan B was prostitution. I'm sorry, plan A. Yeah, plan A was Plan A was prostitution, yeah. It's the importance of getting life insurance, I guess. Yeah, I guess they didn't have, like, telemarketing gigs back then. Not in the 4th century. You could no. find a job. It was a complex economy. This is the 4th century... In Turk, in in not even Turkey at that point, Anatolia is what it was called. It was like the richest part of the world. That was like, and it wasn't even Turkish yet. It was still like Greek. The Turks hadn't moved in or anything. So this guy, plenty of opportunity to find work doing something. Complex economy, and he still was like, "What money I do have, I'm going to use it to get very drunk, and then I'm going to complain to the town." Really, maybe complain for ties. 
He's like, oh, oh no, <laughs> I'm such a horrible father. Oh, I gotta prostitute my daughters. You know my daughters, right? I don't want to prostitute them, but I gotta. Either way, we're open. Yeah, where <sighs> my address is. Isn't this horrible? <laughs> and by the way, if you're a pimp, you're taking handouts. Yes. You're not doing any work except for the complain advertisement. Oh. Uh, All a pimp does is take handouts. Yeah. Who do you think maintains the schedule? <laughs> Organization is important, guys. Yeah. I don't know if you know. I guess he might be. They're probably using their own house. So maybe he's paying rent on that. Yeah. He, a pimp is the SAP software of prostitutes. <clears throat> Just keeps everything in line. Yeah. Wow. That's a deep business cut there, Dan. <laughs> yep. I hope that someone at the bar was like, your daughters? Here, I'll tell you what. I'll give you $20 if you suck my dick. And he was just like, no, my daughters. This is how it goes. I'm above that. Yeah, yeah. no. Really, like, I want to go back in time to that bar and just be like, no, 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 no. Here's a bar of gold. You do it. Right now. You do it. And just see what he says. I'll have a Greek translator, I guess. That, yeah. Also, there might be details left in that story. Um like St. Nicholas just climbs through their, their chimney and leaves the gold without anything in return. Makes me wonder. Yeah, I bet he came down their chimneys all right. One of the daughters was up, and she was like, Santa? And he's like, it's not a thing yet. <laughs> Sinter? Yeah. Sinter? Sinter close? He's like, it's not, why would you even say that? <laughs> it's really weird of you. Yeah. And you then, up? You then, up? <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, can I do anything for that gold? And he's like, yeah, I guess what your dad was going to have you do for it anyway. <laughs> Cause it said former Bishop. I didn't know you could retire. Well, the Pope did Benedict did. Yeah. But I didn't know that was possible. Uh, well, first off all, uh, no former bishops retire. Yeah. There's always former bishops. You don't just most like pretty much with the exception of the Pope. Most of them do peace out in their old age and, and go into retirement. Mm. The Cardinals, bishops, all that stuff. Wait, Doesn't Benedict still just kind of, Dick around at the Vatican. <clears throat> yeah, he's still there. He's living in an apartment or something. What does he do? Nothing. Does he even like come to meetings or anything? Like, yeah, I don't know. The real question is: Is he still infallible? <laughs> what happens if they have differing opinions? See, I don't think he's infallible anymore. Well, I think no, because they got to wear new... the hat. Yeah, the hat is where the power comes from. Yeah. Also, what kind of smoke do they release when you retire? The white smoke is for the new pope, right? But yeah. black smoke is for dead pope. Black smoke's. Yeah, black smoke is for dead pope. And also, then after the pope is dead, the black smoke is for just um, being like, we haven't made a decision yet. Mm -hmm. And then white smoke is, we, we figured it out. What is the pope just gave up smoke? I don't know. There's it's a, just a fire shooting out of the chimney. Yeah, there's no smoke. Why even, make a of flames. Why even make a fire for that? And it's like, oh, we're not thrilled about it either. It just shoots off a flare gun. Yeah. Like SOS. Benedict sucked, though. Pope Frank is tight. Well, he was a uh, part of the Hitler Youth, right? I don't think he had much of a choice in that. That's yeah, fair. not a lot of people did. He was it's also that? he was also a Yuletide lad, though. Not a lot of people know He's that. He's a Yule lad. Yeah. Which Quitty one? Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Which was your least favorite Christmas tradition that I we talked about here, or story? I mean, I wouldn't be too thrilled about the whole furry orgy gangbang in my house thing. Would you be a part of it? That's what I was, so it so there was like a two there was a two hundred year gap right <laughs> <laughs> between <laughs> when that started and when Saint Nick started Figuring fighting it out. It. Yeah, yeah. So not even to, maybe longer. I'm just saying like what the, when they covered it when it became yeah, a real right. problem was like the 1600s. So the so fact they couldn't right. figure out. So at one point you got to think everyone's like, all right, well if you can't beat them, join them. Then all the houses are empty. You're already in the right. big pile. It's like good well, to the it's, town square. It's uh, that sounds terrible too because it's almost like reverse pledge ship. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're a pledge, like you have to, you know, you're like somebody's fucking servant or whatever for six months. You're like a little bitch for six months. But the next three and a half years or more, uh, you know, you get free rides and someone cleans your house for you and yeah. stuff like that. This is like the opposite. It's like you get a couple years of uh, like butt fucking in somebody else's living room. And then, then you start a family of your own. Yeah, and then and then people start fucking BFing in your living room until you die. And yeah. they might be the ones to do it, depending yeah. on how long it takes you to open the door. Man, I bet you that's a weird conversation when you finally like 
tossed your sneakers on the power line for being the, right. the rapey furry yodeler that or caroler that you are. And then like Certainly they show back up. It's like, Oh, Hey Jim, we're here to, you know, pillage your home. Hey man, how's it going? Yeah. There, Open you, the door. You're literally getting it paid forward to you. Yeah. You get yours. Yeah. You yeah. would think that, that would curb some of the behavior. It'd be like, man, whatever I do. Like, you go into somebody's house and some, like, eight-year-old, like, sees your face as you're just, like, jizzing on their Christmas tree. And, and like, the mom is, like, screaming and you just, like, smack her and drink some brandy. And you're like, nothing matters. It's Christmas. <laughs> and that, like, eight-year-old sees you. And then ten years later, he shows up to your house. It's like, and I you've got, like, an infant. Yeah, he remembers. I remember. It's like, it's not what you fucking did. Yeah, trauma. It's a vicious circle, right, bud? <laughs> yeah. If only we all had empathy. You think that would, yeah, you think that would curb it a little bit, but nah, no. That's not how it works. Hurt people hurt people, man. Yeah, no yeah. one really thinks that far ahead. No. In Especially the, then. You're having an orgy in someone else's living room. You're kind of in the moment. You also mm-hmm. might just die tomorrow. True. From natural causes. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? Tuberculosis. Could, catches you. Meat hook. <laughs> <laughs> so Meat are hook the carolers you. the Hitler of the story? No, it's the dad. It's that dad. <laughs> it's okay. the dad. dad is the Hitler. This that dad is the worst. The most unsettling one is the Krampus foot. Thing. I'm actually gonna go with the uh, Nutcracker. Is like uh, Hitler B marrying a seven year old. Wait, a seven year old harmless girl loves me? Yeah, kidnapping the first person who expressed any remote interest in getting romantic with him. Yeah, and it's, it's like a, it's he, a crippled child. He just Katie Holmes her. Yeah. Yeah. Also, who startled her into cutting her own arm off? She did. She saw a vision of a vision the, of the Nutcracker coming oh, to life. So maybe it's kind of a revolving cycle. So he, the Nutcracker, essentially showed up and scared her so bad she cut her own arm off, presumably on purpose. And then, as soon as she got Stockholm syndrome for the Nutcracker, the Nutcracker came through to her dimension. Pulled her into his. Ripped her out of it and, and married her after a year of... Courting? Yeah, imprisonment. I don't know. Maybe the Nutcracker's Hitler. Yeah, that's pretty fucked up. What about uh, Montgomery Ward, the department store? That no, did- that's I, I'm going to full victim blame on that one. Yeah. On May? Yeah. You don't think May deserves his own Maybe content? don't show him the story. He wrote sto- a story about how he was a fucking loser who never lived up to his potential... And then someone st- stole that story of self-awareness from him and fucked him even harder. Isn't that what happened to J.D. Salinger? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, isn't, I mean, Catcher yeah. the Rise about a loser that doesn't amount to anything. Right. So, oh, these kids you can't race fuck off all the bathroom stalls. You never can. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> like, God, I read that story as a Catcher in the Rise only good as, tw- as a 12 year old. Right. And then you read it again later. You even start it and you're like, nope. This kid sucks. I never read it. We had to read it for English class in high school, and I didn't read it, though. There's a really dumb scene. There's a bunch of dumb parts of that book. My least favorite, though, is when he's like, what happened to the fish when the water freezes? And then he gets, gets real sentimental about it. So like, do they just die down there? Yeah, what happens? Man. And it's like... So J.D. Salinger was just experimenting with marijuana? I guess. In the 1950s? Uh, my favorite reclusive author is Thomas Pynchon. Ah. Yeah. I actually really enjoyed The Stranger when I read it in high school. I do not know why. Uh, Camus? Life's mm. pointless. Yeah. I don't care. I was like, man, this is so French. I killed a guy. I'm just going to walk on the beach. Yeah. And then be in a jail cell. And then be happy about getting guillotined. Do I care? I'm not happy. I don't care. I do not care. Nothing. Nothing matters. I am very French. <laughs> yeah, that book sucked. So did the the book where... Uh, I'm sure if I read it now, I'd fucking hate it. Uh, Metamorphosis, where he turns into a beetle. Oh, uh, Kafka's book? Yeah, that sucks. Russian literature is just like straight absurdity half the time. You're just like, oh. Yeah, look where huh. they live. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I guess if I lived in a yeah, fucking most Russians Siberian probably, wasteland, I would hate Russians everything too. Most Russians probably like, wished they were a beetle. Yeah. And uh. had an apple was thrown into their back. Yeah. And caused deformity. Yes. Yes, for sure. 
Uh, so yeah, that's all I got for this episode. Make sure to go ahead and rate and review. Leave five stars if you can, please. And thank you. Uh, tell a friend about the podcast because that's the best way to grow it is word of mouth. Uh, go ahead and check out softcorehistory.com. Buy yourself some merch. I'm currently wearing a Topsy the Elephant t-shirt that uh, you one can of, buy there. One of our listeners, I forget his name because I don't have my phone on me, uh, just sent me a pic today. Um, bought the Two Irish to Die shirt. Get that right now. Another uh, good one. Who knows what the supply chain what? issues are. So it'll be, you order it now, I guarantee you'll get it by St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Day. You will is, get it by St. Patrick's Which is Day. when you need to have it. Yeah. Everyone's going to ask you where you got that shirt. Yep. And then you're going to be like, softcorehistory.com. You heard of, of softcore history? Yeah. And they'll be like, no. You ever heard of the Yuletide lads? Yeah. <laughs> the Yule lads. Oh, yeah. Yule lads. Yule lads. Yuletide lads doesn't work. Yule lads is. The Yuletide cat. Yeah. Yuletide cat, Yule lads. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is like. That's the type of thing, like, you see, like, the leader of the Yule Lads on Tucker Carlson one night. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, there, there's, I'm here with a uh, There's not a 0% sniffer. chance that, like, the Yule Lads are a white supremacy group, right? There's a non-0% That's chance. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Like, there is, yeah. Yule. That, that's a real thing. But, yeah, uh, follow us on Instagram, at Softcore History as well. Um, I believe you're Jake W. Goldman. I am. Uh, I'm Dan Regester, um, R-E-G-E-S-T-E-R. And your Instagram is... Rob Fox 3 all spelled out. Yeah. Including the number. is so spelled out. If you, you want to follow us on Instagram, you can do that too. Yeah, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. My Instagram and Twitter are the same. I think all of ours are the same. But really just help us grow the podcast by telling a friend about it. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we entertain you this week. We, and by the way, when we say this, like we actually have grown quite a bit this year. And we're really thankful for you guys for... Uh, Helping us do that. Our numbers are, are great. Obviously, as you know, we've, we have ads now. We didn't have that. We get start. paid. Yeah, we get this. paid to do this now, but uh, help us keep growing it. And um, yeah, hopefully in the new year, we expand on things a bit. But uh, we're in a good place right now, and we are very thankful for what you've done so far. Agreed. And we got, we got some things, in, some irons in the fire right now for the new year. Yep. That we're, we're talking about. We're in, we might be launching in 2022, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, For Rob Fox and Jake Goldman, I'm Dan Regester, and you just got soft-served.